Hallelujah. I think I'm going to pick out a few people this evening and um, have them come up, and I'm going to get a mic for them, and I'm going to have them uh, tell me what all they're free from. Wouldn't that be fun? And probably none of you, you know, would necessarily be embarrassed because that's not you any that's not you anymore. But you know what I uh, what I try and what I've tried to do over the years, uh, instead of putting somebody else on the spot, uh, I'm always willing to put myself on the spot. Amen. Uh, you know I uh, I think it's important that we understand and that you understand, and that when you have an opportunity to talk with other people that they understand uh, where, where you've been. Now, they don't need to know all the dirty details necessarily, but you just need to be willing to uh, uh, be vulnerable in that way. Because uh, uh, if it wasn't for him, none of us could be in the family of God. And it doesn't make any difference the level of our sin. Uh, the blood only knows one level, and that's overcoming. And so uh, it's not what we did, really, it's what he did. And that's really where our focus needs to be. And, you know, I know we have a, a, a room full of believers, but, uh, but if you have, happen to be in here this evening, we'll give you an opportunity, obviously, later. But, uh, uh, and you, you haven't become a believer. It's really very, very easy to do. Amen. Uh, you can't do it intellectually. You have to do it from your heart. And if you find yourself in that position and, uh, and you know you're not connected with the Father, uh, you've never uh, personally received Jesus, or uh, you're not sure about that relationship, then you need to be. And uh, really, it's, it's as simple as uh, humbling yourself and deferring to what God's Word says. Uh, we're going to look the next several several weeks. I don't know how many, but I'm going to be. This is going to be really, really, uh, uh, really good for me. I'm going to endeavor to be very methodical. You know, now that I'm so blessed that uh, uh, that PK is in most of the services with me, uh, I have to. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. She's here. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to endeavor to be on uh, uh, be on maybe better behavior, and uh, she really likes me to stay on point. Uh, and she really believes that that's good. I'm still going to be able to talk every once in a while uh, about our lack of need for a kitchen. <laughs> but with her being in here, then, you know, it will not, uh, you know, it will not be as bad as one of you telling her out there <laughs> that I said something about it, you know. I mean, that, you know, fine bunch of friends you are, you know. <laughs> huh? You know what Pastor Dean said tonight? Oh, well, you know. I mean, if we're in separate cars, she's calling me on the way home. What, do you, what did you say tonight? <laughs> you know I cook. I said, yeah, I remember. <laughs> she did. <laughs> Hallelujah. She cooked some, uh, what was that you cooked the other night? Some, uh, the cornbread and, and, uh, chili. and chili. Cornbread and chili. Wow. She had some and the kids took the rest of it. But that wasn't their fault or her fault. Moi. That was my fault. Hmm? So we're going to look the next several weeks about these three things. Being a believer, a disciple, and an heir. A believer, a disciple, and an heir. It's important that we understand this. I believe, uh, I believe we're in some really uh, uh, special times as it pertains to the church, uh, to God's plan. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, you know there are plenty of uh, signs, and I, I can remember 30 years ago. Uh, you know, Jesus said he was going to. They said Jesus would be back any time. Well, what was that book that they wrote? Uh, uh, how many reasons that he was going to be back in 1980 or something. I mean, they wrote a book. You know, I don't ever pay any attention to somebody that says they know when he's coming back because the Bible says nobody knows when he's coming back. So I'm thinking whoever writes that book is sorely 
deceived. But the truth is, we know he is. And honestly, we know that uh, there are a lot of things going on uh, in the Middle East that, that the Word of God talks about uh, will transpire um, right before the return of the Lord Jesus, where he comes to, to, to take the church, to catch away. Rapture is not in the Word of God, but it's been used. But uh, Thessalonians tells that it's a catching away of the church, which means uh, that will be the time that he, he will come and he will take those that are presently believers with him. And uh, then there'll be uh, seven years of uh, um, pretty miserable living. Uh, three and a half, uh, the first three and a half, I understand, will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, somewhat tolerable. Uh, uh, the Antichrist will paint a picture of how wonderful he is. And there'll be people that, uh, that buy into that lie. And then at the, the last three and a half years, uh, he'll do what the enemy is doing today to many people, and that's pulling the rug out from under him. Yeah, that's right. Because that's what he does best. Uh, uh, anytime anybody, uh, you know, is serving uh, the enemy, then they're setting themselves up for a, for a fall. But, but anyway, we, we want to understand the progression. Uh, we want to know that, uh, you know, if it's anywhere close at all. I mean, the Bible said that, that when Israel was, was restored... Uh, the nation of Israel was restored. Uh, the Word of God says that, uh, that the generation that saw that would see the coming of the Lord. And it was restored in 1947. Two years after I was born, Israel was restored. Consequently, I'm expecting to see the return of the Lord Jesus. Now, if you don't believe it, just humor me. Because I believe I will see the return of the Lord Jesus. And there'll be a lot of people that will scoff and mock and laugh up to that time. But when we go missing, millions of us in our nation, probably a couple of billion around the world, huh? they're going to find it impossible to figure out what happened. Now, some of them are going to end up with some nice cars and nice houses and hmm, some bills. <laughs> they'll say, wait a minute, this, this is not my bill. <laughs> well, then you've got to get out of this house. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Believers, Disciples and heirs. Believers, disciples, and heirs. Now, I believe before we're finished talking about this, I'm sure, I'm sure I'll have moments of preaching because it's, it's, it's almost, it's not impossible, but it's highly improbable that I could go every service without, you know, getting a little preach on We've already had some because we haven't started yet. <laughs> this has either been preaching or the longest, uh, you know, introduction we've ever had. We want to use this as a foundation verse. Proverbs 11, verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he who winneth souls is wise. Amen. You know, I know sometimes, or not sometimes, but I mean, you know, uh, every time that, that you talk along these lines, you're going to have, you're going to have people in the room who are, who are desperately looking for answers for personal situations and things that they're dealing with. And let me just tell you, when we get the priorities of God uh, and line them up as our priorities, then those answers will begin to come supernaturally. Now, I know that all of you understand that uh, according to the Word of God, both in the Old and the New Covenant, it was never any, any desire of God that anyone perish without having a saving knowledge of him. That's right. 
The Old Testament said uh, it wasn't his will, nor did he take any pleasure in the death of the wicked. Hmm? Peter told us that it's his patience and his long suffering and his desire. The world is still spinning now. Not so you can get a new car. Not so you can receive your healing. Hmm? Because he doesn't want any to perish. Huh? None. And so as long as the earth remains, his greatest desire and the thing that, um, that absolutely excites all of heaven, the Bible says when one sinner, when one individual who has not received Jesus makes a profession of faith in him, they go nuts up there. The angels are around the, around the, around the throne, glorifying, talking about God, how holy and how amazing he is. It says they rejoice when one sinner comes to repentance. Now that's a big deal. Now we know all of the other things that Jesus paid for. He paid for those so we could have them. But, but we need to have the proper perspective. You see, some of you have friends, co-workers, and even relatives that if they don't make a sincere decision to receive the Lord Jesus, they're going to be separated from Him eternally. See, we don't even know what that looks like. All we know is that the Word of God says that it's horrible. You really can't even articulate how bad it probably is. See, we don't know even what that looks like because the presence of the Spirit of God is in the earth. Huh? His goodness covers the earth. But the only ones that have access to that goodness are those that have taken advantage of that goodness by receiving Him. Paul told the church at Rome, he said, it's the, he said, it's the goodness of God, not the severity, not the wrath. It's the goodness of God that draws people to repentance because it's a supernatural event. Huh? It's not a degree in theology because there are plenty of theologians that probably don't even have a relationship with the Father. They got a relationship with education but they don't have a revelation of the only one that can actually save them. So we want to, I want to, we should desire to know some of these things personally. That is, you should. Yes. So that you can, you can actually uh, uh, inquire of the Lord for Him to give you direction as it pertains to you talking with people that are in your world. Yes. I didn't say badgering them. I didn't say hounding them. I said talking with them when you have an opportunity. You don't have to look for the opportunity. You just have to expect there to be an opportunity. Because you'll know when to speak. Hallelujah. You won't have to have a plan of attack. Now you may have somebody that you're targeting. Maybe somebody that you're praying for. Behind closed doors. You're believing for an opportunity. I can assure you God is looking for people who are willing to share His love with others. And I know oftentimes the biggest challenge are your relatives. As a matter of fact, maybe some of you that uh, uh, you've made a move into this room, into this house, and uh, uh, have found what you're looking for, that there's more, that there's a, a, a life that's available and God wants it for you and He'll help you have it. But your family, your friends, they think you've lost it. They think you've lost it. Well, let me just tell you. You haven't lost it. You found it. You found what He has for you. He's got a life for you that will fill you with peace and love for others that can be, can be attained no other way. And so as we see these things, and, and uh, we're going to look at them again. Uh, what is it? The fruit of the righteous. Now, if you're born again, you're righteous, okay? I didn't say you were living right all the time, but you're righteous because you were made righteous. 
through receiving Jesus, you were made righteous. Just write down 2 Corinthians 5, 21. That makes it very clear that God made him sin. No, he didn't make him do something sinful. God put sin on him, Correct. our sin, our separation. He made him sin so that you and I huh, might be made God's righteousness in him. Hallelujah. So you are the righteous. You are the righteous. You'll never be any more righteous than you were the moment you received the Lord Jesus. But now we can learn to, to walk right, to live right, right, to do right. And how many of you know that makes life better yeah. when, we ha- when we learn how to do that? But what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to, we want to, be able to just uh, open our hearts to people who we know probably don't have a relationship and, uh, and uh, let the Father use us. Yes. Let the Word of God speak through us. Let it, uh, let it help people. You know, this is a great place. Obviously, you bring, uh, you bring friends or loved ones or you invite people. You know, that's a, that's a big draw for people. You know, there's a presence in this house uh, from the parking lot to the foyer. I don't, I don't think it has anything to do with the smell from churches, but <laughs> there's a presence and an attitude in this house. There's an air of love in this house. And that's because there's a lot of people in here that uh, love him and he loves them. And so it sets an atmosphere for people. It's not a threatening atmosphere. It's not a critical atmosphere. It's not a judgmental atmosphere. It's an atmosphere of love. Amen. Huh? Hallelujah. I mean, it's easy for me. It's easy for me to love because I was forgiven much. And that's what the word says. Those that have been forgiven much, love much. Of course, you've got to realize how much you've been forgiven for. And even if you didn't have a rap sheet like mine, you've been forgiven plenty. Amen? You've been forgiven plenty. So we're going to take a look at a couple of things. And uh, you can look at this statement very quickly. Becoming a believer is where life begins. It's where life begins. You're a dead person walking until you're born again. You're absolutely dead and without hope. And we'll see that here in just a few moments. And then I want to make this statement. You probably ought to write this down. Jesus' final blood sacrifice was all-encompassing, covering everything you needed for eternal security. You know, there are still quite a few people that believe that... uh, um, There's no such thing as once saved, always saved. I make that very simple personally. And we're going to look at some statements later on in this, in this teaching. Maybe not this evening, but later on in this teaching. That will make it, make it perfectly clear. I simply, I simply say about that, that if you're really saved, you're really saved if you're really saved. See, I believe if you're really saved, even if you take baby steps, even if you spend 40, 50 years crawling, if you're really saved, you're really saved. Hmm? And you know, you've heard me say it before, if you still find it very comfortable to do stuff that you know is wrong, in the first place, you don't ever do it where anybody can see you, maybe except <laughs> who you're with. If you're still comfortable doing things that you know are not pleasing to the Father, then if I were you, I'd spend a little time alone with the Father. Yeah. Amen. Just as simple as that. I'm not a hater. This church, we're not haters. Hmm? We're all in process. We're all growing. It doesn't make any difference if you're coming over, getting over major stuff, or if you're doing some refinement. Huh? We're all in process. 
And let me just tell you something. The only way we're fit to be in his family is because of him, not because of us. And we'll look at some statements that go along with that a little bit later. We're going to look in the book of Ephesians. Uh, we're going to cover a lot of things that really have to do with, uh, with becoming a believer. I want to do that first. Uh, Ephesians ch- uh, chapter 2. Uh, we're going to look at verses 1 through 10. And we're going to be looking in the New Living Translation. Because it's, uh, uh, it's really, really uh, easy to understand. Uh, uh, it doesn't, doesn't really lose or transgress the truth of the, uh, of the King James and makes it very, very simple for us. So uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to start reading. Obviously, if I need to stop and talk about some things, I will. Beginning in verse one, he said, "Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins." Now, you all know this, or most of you know this, uh, because of Adam and Eve's transgression, because of them committing high treason, because of them uh, relinquishing the nature of God that was in them and taking on the nature of the enemy, every one born after them was born in sin. They were separated from God. I know, you know, you have that little baby, they're amazing, how can that baby uh, be, be sinful? Well, it's not that the baby is sinful. It's the baby was born in sin. The baby was born with a sin nature. But let me tell you something about God. And, you know, we used to hear this statement. Well, you know, they're okay in, until the age of accountability. You know, I've had 37-year-olds ask me, do you think I'm accountable yet? No, knowing you, I'm not sure. (laughs) But really, let's think about this good, gracious God Hmm? who has what I believe a fail-safe. I believe until that child, and let me tell you something now, a child, child can come to him really easy and really serious. And a lot of adults say, well, you know, I don't think they understand that. And I would like for you to explain it to me sometime, how that born-again experience happens. I'd like for you to explain to me how this invisible God and His Son, who we've never seen, paid a price so that we could be free to live somewhere we've never seen and be free from stuff we don't even know about. This is all about having faith in the Word of God. We have children come. We have children come to the Lord, and you know, PK, when she was uh, in there, or when she's still in there, and they they make a uh, give an invitation uh, for those little children. You know, they let them raise their hand. Now she tells them, you know, you don't have to get born again again, but you want that child to come to a point where they're confident. Yes. Yes. Jesus is my Savior. Yes. Jesus is my Lord. Yes. Huh? And then they've got to go through the same process we do. In the first place, we have to become little children yes. we have to divest ourselves of all of our right. worthless intellect right. yeah. and come to him as a little child yes. and when we do that then we have time to to grow but the point is we're born into a position of death just the way it is because adam and eve were the original ones on the earth And because they did what they did, the earth was thrust into a place of separation from God. But did he leave us there? Not no, but no. He did not leave us there. huh? He sent Jesus to take care of business. Hallelujah. Hmm? Verse 2, you used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world. And I I think we can honestly say that. Many of us can honestly say that, you know, I was a pretty stinking good sinner. I mean, not that that's something to be, you know, tremendously proud about. But, you know, we just did it. And even before we knew it wasn't right, we knew it wasn't right. Huh? How many of you did some of your best work at night? 
when nobody knew where you were. I mean, maybe with the exception of who you were with. Now, you don't necessarily have to be with somebody, you know, but um, misery loves company. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil. The devil? Yes, he is the little G God of this world. He is the one. He is the one that rules the hearts of the disobedient. He is the one who works his stuff into people's lives and deceives them into thinking that wrong is right and what feels good is wonderful. But the truth is, how many of us found out without raising our hands that uh, you can't go by that? Obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. That's not us, is it? No. Sure not. Verse 3, all of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But, I always like to see a but. Yeah. Yes. But God. Yes. Yes. But God so rich in His mercy. Hmm? so rich in His mercy. And He loved us so much. <laughs> Hallelujah. Never wanted this to happen, but knew it would, but was willing to do what it took. Even before it happened, He saw the Master making the sacrifice. See, you can't grasp that intellectually. Because Jesus, the Bible says, was slain before the foundation of the world. Well, you would think, God being God, that He would set this thing up so it wouldn't have to work like that. But you see, He set it up like that for one reason, so that those that chose to be in His family would do it because they loved Him. Not because He made them. Not because He... uh, threatened them but because he loved them right. you know that's what that's always what's made me want to be better that and then PK hounded me a little bit but I want to be better because I realize how great he is huh Amen. and then of course if you've got a great wife you got a great husband then you can help one another you can remind one another amen yes. good friends you can remind one another Hallelujah. And He loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, He gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Only by God's grace. God was gracious enough to make a plan for us to be free. We didn't formulate it. We didn't know anything about it. Hey, we didn't even know we were lost until maybe we heard a sermon or somebody started hammering us about it. You're a sinner. You're a jerk sinner. <laughs> so, okay, well, you're pretty sinful yourself, you know. So, it's really not the way to approach people. No. You know when a person's wrong, they know they're wrong. Yeah. And really the last thing they want to hear is how wrong they are. Hmm? That's what happens when you, when you mix rebellion and pride together. Huh? When you mix rebellion and pride, it comes out obstinate. Huh? Unwilling to hear or to change. Verse 6, For He raised us from the dead along with Christ. Now listen to that. Huh? Every one of us, even though we weren't even born yet, When Jesus rose from the dead, we were in Him. We were already paid for before we got here. Huh? So just check your brain out. We don't need your brain tonight. Huh? This is faith food. This is heart food. Huh? 
<laughs> this is stuff that only God could do. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, you have to. That's why, that's why it's very challenging for intellectuals to step into the kingdom. Because, I mean, you can just look at them. They're just, well, why, oh, well, well, I don't understand that. Really? Of course you don't understand it. Of course you don't understand it. Because you're hearing with these ears, but not the ears of your heart. You're not paying attention with these ears. You're not saying, man, that's what, the, that's what the Bible says. Well, listen, if that's what the Bible says, I don't have to figure it out. Exactly. He didn't ask me to figure it out. That's right. He just asked me to believe. believe. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. For He raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. He sees us. When, when, we're, when we're believers, when we're born again, huh? I mean, we know that Jesus is sitting at his right hand. So, come here, Mark. Let's let you play God. You got a church shirt on. Maybe I should have had you play Jesus. See, here's, here's God. Let's pretend he's sitting. He's not. Well, he can. Okay, now I'm going to have to sit down too. So, here's God. And I'm Jesus. And here, here's what we're looking at right here. We're, this is the way they do. They're not getting up. They're not wringing their hands. They're both chilling. Now, they've already done all that serving. So those of you that haven't been serving, but you've been chilling, this is not a reason for you to chill. But what we read right here is that God's sitting here. And Jesus not only is sitting there personally, but God can see us in Him every time He looks over. Because we're in Him. Isn't that what the Word of God says? We are seated with Him. Now, we could go a long way with this because if we're seated with Him, then our feet are dangling over anything and everything that tries to adversely affect us. Everything. Huh? We're not looking up at our problems. We're not even looking parallel with our problems. All our problems and all our issues are under our feet. And that's where we sit. Glory to God. Thanks. That's where we sit. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, that, that's something for you. You need to chew on that some. Because it's not going to be something that you're going to, uh, you know, mentally grasp. You ju you're just going to begin on the inside. It begins to build a confidence on the inside of you. I'm not having to fight for what belongs to me. It already belongs to me. huh? I don't have to be fearful about anything because it's already been paid for, praise God. I am seated in Him. Hallelujah. Look at that. By receiving Him. You are in Him. Amen. You were already in Him. But to seal the deal, you have to receive Him. Yes. And the moment you seal the deal, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Jesus said, if you confess me before men. In other words, if you declare to man, to men, to people, to women, I have received the Lord Jesus, then the Lord Jesus is able to turn and say, Father, so-and-so that's been saved ever since I was raised has received that salvation. Yes. And then their name at that moment is not just in the Lamb's book. It is indelibly yes. printed in the Lamb's book. In other words, it ain't going away, praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Yeah, that is good. That's powerful. Verse 7, so God can point to us in all the future ages. Look what time it is. So God, don't look what time it is. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of His grace and kindness. Check out my kids. My boy and I, we got these kids back. They were lost and we bought them back. My son paid the price so they could be a part 
of the family, huh? Just point at them, just brag on them, you know? Look at them. Look at all my kids. These kids took advantage of what my son has done. So God can point out to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of His grace and kindness toward us as shown in all He has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. Now listen, listen, we got a long way to go in, in just believer. But I mean, I'm going to tell you if, you, ever, if you ever make a decision to become a disciple, man, when something like we, what we just read becomes real on the inside of us, as shown in all He has done done for us. You know, Norman Normal doesn't know anything about that. Hmm? Huh? But hungry 25 percenters like y'all, yes. you find out about that. Verse 8. God saved you by His grace when you believed. God saved you by His grace when you believed. Doesn't say you had to do anything else. When you sincerely believe, God saves you. And how many of you know none of us can judge that? That's not anybody's call. That's between the Father and the individual. He doesn't look on the outward appearance. He looks at the heart. But you know what? You know, and He knows. Amen. That's why, that's why until a person know, knows that they know that they know, then they want to get in a position where they know that they know. God saved you by His grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. I mean, there, there are denominations like that. Well, you know, you're just not working hard enough. You're just, you know, well, I'm, we're not sure that you're giving is good enough. Well, you know, uh, we've had some extra things going and you haven't been here to help out. You know, are you saved? We don't call anybody and ask them that. We believe. We believe. Hallelujah. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. His very nature was deposited in us. So we can do the good things He planned for us long ago he, he, he's planned that we do good stuff but it's not good stuff to earn what he freely gave us because hmm? the good stuff we do now man it makes our life better it makes other people's lives better always does when you become a believer man you got a real shot at the abundant life we're going to give us some more ammunition beginning next Wednesday, but we covered more than I thought we would, and I'm excited about that. We got a lot more to cover, but we're not in any hurry. We don't have anything to do till he comes back. Yeah. Nothing to do till he comes back. And then from that point forward, we're really going to do some learning. Amen. Yeah.